Hi everyone. The USS Confederacy was a 36-gun sailing frigate of the Continental Navy during the American Revolutionary War. She was built at Chatham, Connecticut, and launched on November 8, 1778. The Confederacy was designed by John Paul Jones, a Scottish-American naval officer who is considered to be the father of the American Navy. In January 23, 1777, authorization was granted for the construction of two vessels in Connecticut, one of which eventually became the 36-gun frigate named Confederacy. This choice of name paid homage to America's inaugural official government system, the Articles of Confederation. Joshua Huntington from Norwich took charge of overseeing the construction project. The ship's construction began on February 18, with land leased from a local resident Ebenezer Story in Norwich. The Confederacy was built at a shipyard owned by John Peckham. The ship's keel was laid on February 1, 1778. The Confederacy was constructed using a variety of materials, including oak, pine, and cedar. Her hull was planked with oak, and her masts and spars were made of pine and cedar. The construction of the impressive 153-foot vessel marked a significant achievement for the local shipwrights. The ship exhibited distinctive design features, including intricate wood carvings and a vintage-style figurehead. Notably, it featured a unique secondary propulsion system with up to 28 ore ports beneath the gun ports. This system supplemented the ship's sailing power, enhancing maneuverability, and provided an alternative means of propulsion if the ship ever lost its masts while sailing. Construction faced various challenges, including delays and a constant lack of funds. After nearly two years, the Confederacy was finally launched on November 8, 1778. The launch was a major event, and it was attended by a large crowd of people. The Confederacy was launched by a team of women, who were led by Hannah Heaton. It was then towed to New London for the final stages of rigging and outfitting. An advertisement in the Providence Gazette described the Confederacy as a very fine vessel, perhaps superior to any ever built in America. Indeed, the ship was visually striking, being among the largest vessels constructed during the Revolutionary War. The historical records indicate that the construction of the Confederacy involved a diverse workforce, including a significant number of Mohegan Native Americans and African Americans, as revealed in the surviving Confederacy papers held by the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. The crew, led by Seth Harding of Norwich, was assembled, and among them was Ebenezer Story, who served as the ship's carpenter throughout its active service. The Confederacy was commissioned into the Continental Navy on March 2, 1779. From May 1 to August 24, 1779, the USS Confederacy, under the command of Captain Seth Harding, patrolled the Atlantic coast. While escorting a convoy of merchant vessels on June 6, she, along with the ship Dean, seized three prizes, repelled two British frigates, and safely guided the convoy to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On September 17, 1779, Confederacy received a crucial assignment. It was tasked with transporting a significant diplomatic delegation to France, comprising the French minister, Count Conrad Girard, and the American minister to Spain, John Jay, along with their spouses. Only a few weeks into the voyage from America to France, the Confederacy encountered a formidable hurricane that dismasted the ship and caused extensive damage. Despite the crew facing a dire situation, the ship's secondary propulsion system proved instrumental. Disagreements arose about whether to continue the journey to France or head for the nearest friendly port. Ultimately, the decision was made to power the ship to the French colony of Martinique for repairs. This incident significantly delayed the Confederacy's mission, leading to the delegation being transferred to the French frigate Lauror, which arrived in Cadiz, Spain, on January 22, 1780. While in Martinique, 
Repairs on the severely damaged frigate were only partially completed due to Congress struggling to secure funds. To address this, both the Continental Navy and privateers intensified efforts to seize British vessels and sell the captured loot. One such success was the capture of the British ship's era by the Continental Sloop Saratoga in early 1780, providing much needed financial relief. In May of the same year, John Brown, Secretary of the Board of Admiralty for the Continental Congress, directed Captain Harding to return to Philadelphia for the completion of the remaining repairs on the Confederacy. Brown also mandated the immediate sale of substantial quantities of wine seized by American privateers. On October 28, 1780, Captain Nicholson took over command from Harding. The Confederacy spent the remainder of 1780 and the winter of 1781 berthed in Philadelphia and encountered further delays in its refitting. By the spring, the Confederacy set sail for its second major cruise of the West Indies together with the Continental ship Steen, Saratoga, American privateer Fair American, and the French naval brig Cat. This cruise yielded the capture of the British vessel Diamond, laden with plunder. In 1781, Confederacy, laden with military stores and supplies, was returning from Cape Francois in the West Indies, escorting a fleet of 37 merchant vessels. On April 14, off the Delaware Capes, she encountered HMS Roebuck and HMS Orpheus. The British ships compelled Confederacy to surrender, though most of the merchantmen she escorted escaped. Having acquired their new prize, the British authorities towed the Confederacy to England and rechristened it as the Confederate. Official blueprints and specifications created during its time there are currently housed in the National Maritime Museum of Greenwich in London. Upon arrival in England, however, British carpenters were disheartened to discover that the ship was severely compromised both from substantial damage and the extensive use of green lumber throughout its hull. Deemed unsuitable for use, the ship was dismantled in 1782. The Confederacy met what could be considered an untimely demise and never achieved the legendary status of the USS Constitution. Nevertheless, this formidable yet imperfect frigate, crafted in Connecticut, earned its place in history as part of America's inaugural navy.
Thanks for watching.